broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round and you can't find a fighter but i see it in you so we can walk it out move mountains we can walk it out and move mountains My arthritis diagnosis was both shocking and unsurprising for me and my family. At the age of 14, I was diagnosed with a st connective tissue disorder called Stickler syndrome. More specifically, I was diagnosed with Stickler syndrome type 1, which is a mutation of the COL2A1 gene. Due to having Stickler syndrome, I was diagnosed with holes in my retinas, moderate hearing loss, heart issues, small jaws, short stature, which is caused by a separate skeletal dysplasia called spondylopithecial dysplasia, and severe sleep apnea, which requires me to use a CPAP. Other conditions I have not caused by sickler syndrome are dermatographia, which is a skin condition, brachymetatarsia, a condition where the fourth toe is shorter than the rest, and Radnoid syndrome. All these conditions were diagnosed before I turned 18 years old. My childhood was spent going to countless numbers of doctor's appointments along with multiple blood tests, MRIs, x-rays, and CAT scans. Even though I was struggling with all of this, I still remained a happy and energetic child. Everyone who knew me would describe me as a little ball of energy with a huge smile. How I got to my diagnosis of arthritis was unique. In November of 2019, I started to experience severe pain in my left hip. When I saw my orthopedic surgeon in January 2020, he believed it was tendonitis. He recommended I continue with physical therapy, but added one month of naproxen, which is a pain and anti-inflammatory drug. Unfortunately, on March 13, 2020, the world shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. During quarantine, I was pain-free until October of 2020. My right hip started hurting worse than my left. As my pain got progressively worse, I was unable to sit for long periods of time or stand for long periods of time. My physical therapist recommended that we made another appointment with my orthopedic surgeon, in which we did, and he recommended that I go back to physical therapy and do naproxen for another month. As predicted, this did not help with my pain long term. My pain got better until about October of 2021, but I was so sick of hearing the same thing over and over again. I said that I was going to wait it out until January of 2022, to when I had my yearly checkup with my orthopedic surgeon. After two plus years of extreme pain in both of my hips, I went and saw my orthopedic surgeon in January of 2022, and he ordered an MRI. To everyone's surprise, my MRI showed mild sacroiliitis in my sacroiliac joint. The sacroiliac joint is the joint between the sacrum and the ilium bones of the pelvis. I was officially diagnosed with sacroiliitis on February 18, 2022. Our first treatment plan was a small dose of meloxicam once a day. Unfortunately, I was not a fan of this medication because it didn't relieve any of the pain I was feeling. I felt it was pointless to take a medication that wasn't helping me. In early March of 2022, I started taking my meloxicam treatment, but unfortunately, this treatment did not work for me. From March 2022 to June of 2022, my right ankle started to swell and was extremely stiff in the mornings and throughout the day. At this point, I had an idea that my arthritis was getting worse and that's why my ankle started hurting. But in June of 2022, I went and saw my orthopedic surgeon again to check in with him after my MRI. But this time I wanted him to look at my ankle. He took an X-ray of my ankle and it shows some joint abnormalities which are consistent with arthritis, especially osteoarthritis. On this day, June, 27th of 2022, I was diagnosed with osteoarthritis in my ankle. Due to the fact my ankle was not getting any better and it was affecting me on a daily, I decided to make an appointment with my rheumatologist on August 12th of 2022. During this appointment, we discussed other options for treatment. One option being a high dose of methotrexate. The other option would be Humira injections twice a month, a folic acid every day, and a low dose of methotrexate to counteract the Humira. Like a small boat on the ocean, sending big waves into motion. Like how a single word can make a heart open. I might only have one.
I do want another track suit. There's five of them right there. And like, <laughs> do I just like chug this or like what do I do? These. Now I gotta take one of these every single morning. For a while. side and then like it also radiates down oh my god that's one month of taking at the track site it's september 13th and i will have been taking the track site for four weeks so yep these are my last five tablets you can't really see them but they're right there <laughs> on Friday, and we'll go pick them up from the pharmacy. And so five methotrexates means one folic acid. Like a small boat on the ocean, sending big waves into motion. Like how a single word can make a heart hard open. This is the pen thingy. The alcohol wipe. Instructions. So we have to wait 20 minutes. 